In this smartphone show, a hands-on preview of the Nokia N77 TV smartphone, interviews with some of the luminaries at the Future Technologies Conference last week, a hands-on demonstration of the USB device charger from ProPorter, and a rant about touchscreens. Sorry if it offends. So this is a hands-on with the Nokia N77, perhaps the world's first mass-market digital TV smartphone. A 2.4-inch screen, 16 million colours, looks pretty good. Roughly the same form factor as the N73. There are stereo speakers either end of the device for maximum separation. There's a dedicated key for opening and closing the TV application. And when you press the key, it opens the same channel as you were previously watching, which is very handy. There's an internal antenna, so no dangly bits. The TV viewing time is up to five hours, which is pretty good, really, for a concentrated screen on TV watching. And it doesn't heat up, unlike some dedicated handheld TVs. The N77 has all the usual N-series capabilities, including the core PIM applications, music playback, etc., etc. Channel changing is done by pressing the joystick to go up and down the main channel list, or using left-right on the navigator to nudge across the channel list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. The channel switching time is around 5 seconds, which is a, a bit frustrating, but understandable considering what it's doing behind the scenes. There's also a full program guide, and you can set reminders for programs you like, and these are integrated into the S60 calendar, so alarms pop up at the right times. All in all, the N77 is pretty impressive, and the only real downside is whether people actually want to watch TV on the move in the same way that they currently listen to music. Watch this space for more tests. Well, last week I went along to Ruley House in Oxford for the Future Technologies Conference 2007, bringing together some of the top names in the mobile industry, all in one lecture theatre, all in one time. It's organised by Forum Oxford, so I asked Peter Holland of the Forum what the conference was all about and how the Forum got started. Well, Forum Oxford started about 18 months ago, and um, in that time we built up 1,300 members. And we felt it was time uh, that, that everybody got together and had a chance to meet face to face. We've all been communicating online yeah. um, from various parts of the world over those 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 months, and uh, it's finally happened. A lot of us are all here together from from all corners of the world. Now, video and slides from the talks will be up on the Forum Oxford website in due course. But in the meantime, I took the opportunity to interview some of the speakers. Okay. Well, I'm Russell Buckley, and um, I. Wear two hats really. I blog at Mob Happy, um, which has got about 40,000 readers a month, and about mobile technology with Carlo Longino. And I also am managing director in Europe for a company called AdMob, which does um, advertising on the mobile web. I, I guess we're talking about pages custom designed for, or machine designed for reading on smartphones and feature phones. Mm -hmm. uh, more and more phones, especially smartphones now, are coming with browsers that can. Mm -hmm cope with the full majesty of web pages yeah. or at least to make it a good attempt yeah. do you see more of that happening cutting into the the market that AdMob currently serves ads to which is more the the strictly mobile web well I, I don't I don't see it and we're, we're technology agnostic and providing it's being shown on the, um, on, the, on, the on a handset will serve ads to it um, so I don't really see that as an issue going forward particularly um, you know, we're very much committed to the mobile web, um, and therefore I don't see us going into the, um, the, the kind of PC-type world environment. Um, but other than that, you know, we'll, we'll carry on like we're doing. And you'll be serving ads, even if uh, a, a site is uh, mobile design, but still fairly rich, there'll still be an opportunity for places like AdMob to serve ads to those sites. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I mean, currently we only do text-based ads, but we've just launched banners in the, in the States. Uh, okay. And we'll obviously be rolling out those. And in due course, we'll adopt, um, you know, more techno richer technology, such as video, when it comes available. Uh, on a mass market basis, but more importantly, when consumers aren't going to have to be charged for downloading that when they're all on fixed price data plans, which is obviously coming in now. That's right. Um, I see you're an S60 fan from, from blog entries past. What are you using at the moment, Russell? I use a, a Nokia E61. Okay, and what do you see yourself using next year, any say, any year's time? Anything you're listing after? Probably a Nokia N95. Okay, which uh, I can lend you mine. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> uh, I'm l listing after an E90, and I'm guessing an E90 might also serve your serve your needs bigger yeah, than E61. Fan. Although currently, I mean, m most of a lot of what I do is actually because um, I travel a lot. 
I'm finding I'm doing an awful lot of email on the move and I think yeah. perhaps Blackberry still might suit my needs in some ways, but reluctant as I am to move away from, uh, from a Nokia. Now, probably the hands-down cleverest guy at the entire conference was Jeff Sonstein from the Rochester Institute of Technology. I asked him why he was here and what was his focus. I'm here because I'm really interested in the convergence of software and hardware technologies from large devices moving on down to small devices and the whole issue of ubiquitous computing through handheld devices. Okay. And, and so I'm going to be talking some about some of the nuts and bolts, the practicalities of taking a, com a company's website and repurposing the contents. Uh, one of the things I've been playing with recently is the Nokia N95, which I'm sure you've, you've seen. And have, you, have you played one, with one of these yet? A little bit, yes. Yeah. I guess this is more or less what you're talking about in terms of ultimate convergence. Very, very close to it. Um, not to plug any particular company, but yeah. the, the released information about the Apple iPhone is very, very close to what I'm talking about. Okay. Where you've got a palm top like people would have a desktop, where end users can create their, their own um, widgets and the, the user contributed applications become much yeah. more possible than they are today. What sort of device do you think we'll all be using in five years time? What would it look like? Is the N95, the iPhone, is that close to where things will end up? I think we're going to be using devices that don't have styluses. I think we're going to be using devices that look much more like a small version of your regular desktop. With a touch screen that you operate with your fingers? Yes, yeah. yes. I think one of the more interesting developments in hardware is the emergence of multi-touch displays okay. where um, all sorts of interesting gesture-oriented user interface ideas become possible. That, of course, was just a very brief snapshot of some of the people at the Future Technologies Conference at Forum Oxford. There'll be more coverage in video and audio of this conference over on allaboutsymbian.com in the audio and video podcasts, and, of course, later on on the Forum Oxford site itself with archived slides and presentations. So here I'm demonstrating the ProPorter mobile USB device charger. It basically consists of a stylish box and a big lithium-ion rechargeable battery inside. When you're at home or in the office, you plug in the mini USB lead, and you can then plug, uh, plug it into any PC or laptop and recharge using the built-in 5-volt power from your PC. Or there's an adapter that adapts this to charge off a 12-volt socket in your car or from mains electrics. Then when you need to charge your mobile device, in this case uh, perhaps a, a Nokia N95 that's running low on power, you use one of the again supplied uh, adapters, plug it into the out socket. In this case there's a retractable lead. On the other end of this there's a variety of supplied adapters for the different mobile phone connectors. You plug it into your smartphone and then press the button on the device charger. After a few seconds it turns green and also you'll see the device then starts charging. So what is this current obsession with touchscreens on smartphones? Now, okay, you're in an office, you're in a train, you're at home. You can sit down comfortably, you can get your hand held out, your smartphone, hold the stylus in the other, and you can do some pretty interesting things. If you've got an Apple iPhone, you can even splay your fingers apart and do some really cool stuff with maps and documents and web pages. But phones, smartphones, they're designed to be used out and about. Hanging from a tube strap on, on a train, being jolted around on a bus, uh, walking along with your family, basically living life away from the office, away from home. In other words, having an active existence. And you just can't do those sort of things with a touchscreen based, a stylus based smartphone. The very fact that the device is mobile and you're active means that you need to be able to do things one-handed if necessary and that usually means with something like S60 or Windows Mobile for smartphones where you can do everything with one hand entering text on a key, numeric keypad uh, using a, an options key for a menu and, and a back key for back that's all you need and it's all you should need you shouldn't have to be able to press specific points on the screen with a stylus 
And there are other issues to do with stylus control on a mobile device that's to be used outdoors. Uh, what about screen contrast? Adding the touch sensitive layer on any device dramatically increases reflectivity and decreases contrast. You just try using any stylus based device, any, in bright sunlight, you're immediately stuck. Uh, Non-touchscreen devices tend to be far, far better and can use different technology screens to give much better contrast. Thirdly, having stylus control, touchscreen control of a device, usually implies tapping on fairly small icons. Uh, you've only got a small screen to play with in the first place, so the, the, ac the active uh, control areas, the icons, have to be reasonably small. And you try tapping on one of these while you're walking along, while you're on a bus or on a train being jolted around. Even worse, uh, try tapping on little letters on an on-screen keyboard or trying out a built-in graffiti or jot or character recognition again uh, while you're active. So why do I keep seeing in blog entries and comment streams on posts about the iPhone, uh, N95, whatever the current smartphone of the day is, people saying, no touchscreen, no way. Where are they planning to use these devices? Uh, in the office? At home? In which case, why not use your PC or your Macintosh? Um, do mobile devices, devices used as a smartphone with ultra-convergence, doing all these wonderful things for you anywhere in the world, they're designed to be used out and about. You can't use a touchscreen effectively in most of the places these people are planning on using them. It just doesn't work. And so, with apologies to Steve Jobs and Apple and the iPhone and Sony Ericsson and their UIQ3, smartphones. I'm sorry these devices aren't for me and I can't see how they're going to be a roaring success once some of the limitations on their use become apparent. For me the, the ultimate uh, smartphones, the devices at the moment are for example the Nokia N95 that I'm shooting this clip on, uh, the Nokia E61i having a, 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 th a QWERTY thumb keyboard and a reasonable camera and a good set of integration features and the Motorizer Z8, uh, the Motorola phone based on Symbian and UIQ3 but without the touchscreen. And also any new smartphone based on Windows Mobile 6 standard, which is their, the new name for the, the non-touchscreen enabled version of Windows Mobile, and that will include all the Windows Mobile Office applications. Um, this is the class of uh, device that I really believe in at the moment and you'll see more of these on the Smartphone Show in upcoming shows.